viewers, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We got us an aluminium drive shaft, and this is out of a Chevrolet, some old G van. Uh, Josh is working on over there, and he told me the U joint is broke. This one is inside. Oh, it's my shelf back there, but the inside cap on this one is wasted. Uh, it's actually got the cap broke. Hopefully it's not eat into the drive shaft itself. These aluminum ones don't take a whole lot of stress, but uh, the cap is broke, so we gotta get it out. These can be pretty sensitive. If you miss with your hammer, well, you bought yourself a shaft. So I just take a block of wood and run a hole saw through it so we can set it on here. We've got something to hit against and it's gonna allow our cap to come through. Uh, so what we can do, First and foremost, we got to get all of our outside clips off in this style. Uh, so I got a pair of pliers, a little bit of spray. We'll beat them a little bit. We'll get all our caps loose, and we'll start knocking it apart. So we'll give her a little douche today. We're going to be using Liquid Wrench penetrating oil. Freeze nuts, bolts, guaranteed to cut the rust. All right. Now that we are backed by the personal guarantee. Give the whole thing a thorough saturation, we'll call it. Stick it up on our block. We don't really need to use the open part at this point, so we'll preserve that in case we end up damaging it. We'll give the rings a little whack and then they should come loose. Or just break off what they like to do, both of them did. So the ears break off. If you can get underneath one side, you're usually in good shape. Like so. Sometimes whacking them with a hammer will actually break the ears off that you grab a hold of with your pliers, but that's not a huge deal. Get some loose. Tension. My plan, if all goes well, will beat on this, get it to start moving. Neither one of the sides of the drive shaft appear to be damaged. The other end of this drive shaft appears to be damaged, so it might give us some fits. And it did not budge. I need to get out on the edge of my bench where it's a little strong, it's a little flimsy in the middle. Plus the wood absorbs some of the energy of the shock. I really hate putting any type of power tool press on this. I'm always fearful that it will pinch the ears together or damage the outside of the aluminum. You know, so let's say we used a ball joint press or something similar. All right, that looked like it moved. So what we'll do is we'll move it back the other direction. Because you can see we came up flush move it back the other direction, get it moving, then we'll pound it out on that circular portion. That should be open enough for us to beat it right down through, hopefully. Pull the cap off so you can see that cap has seen better days. And it's not even really the bad one. I don't think that we can get our U-joint out tipping it. I don't know if we got enough room or not. Sometimes you can, depends on the style of U-joint, but this one 
we do. <laughs> Look at that, maybe because it's so worn. But that's the broken cap Josh was telling me about. So that one's super busted. Funny thing is the guy had no complaint on this. It came in for an oil change. It's like, no, no problems. But you can see it's kind of oblong that side of the joint. So there's that. And then from beating it down, when we hit it down, it's actually a little, put a little burr in it. So we have to clean that up. So we will stick this to the side. Right now. Take the same thing here. We'll try to get this one, get this little guy moving. Everything's getting good and slick now. Oh, baby. Let's get it slickery. A little more slippery. Slickery. Is slickery even a word? Uh, it doesn't do anything. Makes a good mess for you. I'm not hugging you. I'm just getting a napkin. Hit my hand too hard. could stick the ball joint press on this side without too much worries, but I thought I felt it move, but I didn't. pressure on it. Really hate the thought of pushing the ears in. Sometimes you put a little pressure on it and you give it a whack and they'll pop right out. Or at least get moving for you. Like I say, sometimes squeezing them like this, you take a chance, you know, if you're pushing in, pushing the U-joint and pulling this ear, you know, you could bend the ears of the joint together. You wouldn't think, you know, as solid as they are, that that would be possible, but it is. And it's a pain in the hoo-hoo to get them back. Be using the brand new DeWalt, I don't even know what they call it. The XR, I guess. Not a sponsor. Time to upgrade. And that's what was on sale. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being a pansy today. That actually moved relatively easy. Quit being a Sally. Through. You cannot pull this one, you know, out this way. Get her started straight. Been being a wuss bag. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. I'm gonna go and clean these up. Wire wheel them, you gotta clean out the groove. It's always important to have a good clean groove. Use a pick, scrape around in there, get out all the crusty stuff, and then wash it out, and we should be ready. And these little burrs on the inside from knocking the cross through. You can't hardly see them on these ones, but it puts that little burr. We're just gonna go in there with a round file and just knock the edge off it. 
and I'll go see if our new U joint's here. I got them pretty well cleaned out. Stuffed it in a sandblaster. Of course, that doesn't get in the groove great, so I had to clean out the groove with a pick. That looks pretty good. You can see I got those cleaned out pretty well. I'll go get our file and I'll touch up those spots that we nicked. Just on the one side where we drove it down, you'll see them. I can see these ones aren't horrid, but if you don't do something with them, they could snag your cap and make it a lot harder to put the U-join in. All right, that looks good. Give me another hazy. We got some that for you joints, not a sponsor. SKFers. The classic 331 U joints. And a little baggie here. So we'll pop our caps off. grease fitting in, we'll have to orient it in such a way that it's usable, or greasable, rather. I think if we have it facing what's in the vehicle this way, we should be able to get on that a little better than we would in the aluminium portion, because it's so much thicker here, yeah. So we'll put that facing out towards the yoke. And then we'll hold that and very gingerly slip a cap on here. We should be able to tap that down in there nicely. So be, be careful on the aluminum. It doesn't take much and then you got a big old booger on it. Flip her over, wipe off the schmoo. We'll get another cap. Drive that down. Give us some new clips here. Darn sure that's in the groove. Get it right on the end of your pliers. Right where you'll pinch your finger and have one of those real nice blood blisters. Just a schmidge. It's still a little tight. It's still a little bit tight. Usually you bang right on the end of the shaft. I hate doing that on aluminum. That always freaked me out, baby. Steel drive shaft, just bang on the end, it realigns the needles, and you know your U joint becomes very loosey goosey. Now, we'll do the same thing on this side.
I'll stick this one in like this. Get her started. If everything's good and clean, it should start relatively even for you. That shouldn't pop back out of the bearing. We could have flipped our block over where it was cleaner, but we didn't. Be mindful of your grease fitting if it's in that you don't drive your joint through far enough to, you know, hit your fitting and break that off. shafts too much. We'll grab ah, the grease gun. Wipe the schmoo off the tip. There's that. For a couple shots of grease. And then we got to do the end that is slightly damaged. This side looks good. Wipe off our excess grease. I don't see any of our rings popping out. Everything looks good. Looks like they're seated well. All right, I'm happy with that side. This side is damaged. This ear is popped in on it. Lots of corrosion. Uh, the clip here is almost popped out. Now this U-joint isn't horrible. I mean, it's not, it's definitely not the best. It's pretty dry. It does need to be replaced. This side worries me. If we get this apart and the corrosion is so bad that it can't hold the U-joint, we're kind of screwed. This side here, the clip is almost corroded all the way. The only portion of the clip that is left is from here to here. So, Let's do it like any other job. Let's tear into it. See what happens. Can't fix it by looking at it. That's what my dad used to tell me. That's all that's left of that clip. That's all that's left of that clip whatever else hit the floor. So my intention with this one is if we can avoid messing with the end that's already messed, we know we can take this U-joint out by tipping it, or at least we did the last one. Uh, whether that's because I had a broken cap or not, I don't know. But we'll take one, we'll just beat this one down this way and leave this whole area alone. That way we don't take the chance of breaking it out, hopefully. Or at least get the U-joint out so we can make a better assessment.
seven. Let's see. If that'll come out, that'll be fantastic. But I think that might have been results of a crappy cap on the other one. I'm thinking, son of a monkey. Well, what if we drive this cap up in to its breaking point and then try to pop the cross out of it? Do we have enough room now? No. Son of a hooski. That sucker is super corroded. What would Mima do? We're gonna have to drive it out, try to square this up a little, square it up, round it off. However you want to say it. Because we're gonna end up driving it through. He's rough. I'm hesitant to tap out on it. Something happened. I better just keep going, right? I don't think we're no worse for wear than when we started. Aluminium disappears very quickly. And you'll have a very loose fitting U joint. Good enough. We'll save that. Just a bolt with a slot cut in it. You can put your uh, cloth of the emery in there. Tried to clean out that groove the best I could. It's quite heavily corroded and the lip of it is almost non-existent. Technically it should be getting a new drive shaft. In theory, because the groove just is gone. Whoa, almost right in my face. Mm, how's that for you headphone users? All right, well, this is what we have to work with. That's the damage side. from when I went potty. <laughs> There's a fun for you. Got that potty juice on it. Watch this. Same new joint in the back. We will be nice and line our grease fittings for the guy doing the oil changes. AKA Josh. Or myself or Jason. Where's our grease fitting down here? It's in the bottom corner. Just like so. And we'll 
face this one away from the shaft. Also, there's that mother loving phone. Whoa, fella! You're telling me my company is not registered with Amazon Alexa. Oh boy. I think we'll survive either way. Nice to get the most heavily corroded portion or lack thereof uh, clippage hole groove into the open slot. And we'll do that by spinning it around until we see a spot where it looks super, which I think is going to be right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think this edge here is the worst. Worst of the worst. It's all bad, but this side here is horrible. Nope, that didn't work, fella. That sucks. Son of a hooski. I think it's too corroded, fellas. Guess what? We already bought the fire and we took it out. One way to find out if it's good is to whack on it, but unfortunately when it corrodes, it doesn't have that square edge in there anymore. It uh, is slightly rounded. So I think what we'll do, that one actually feels better than the other side. I'm wondering if we take a Dremel tool with a cutoff bit and go in there and just at least deepen the groove. Um, we don't have much of a choice. That's what we'll do. We'll go in and waller it out. What's up, girl? Mm -hmm. Did you? How's your mouth? Numb. Numb? <laughs> how was the dentist? Well, how was the dentist? <laughs> What's in there? Um, Band-aids for my tooth. Band-aids for your tooth. How the heck does a band-aid stay on your tooth? You just put it in. Is that what you got in your mouth right now? Uh-uh. Oh. Just numb. Just numb? Where, which side? Like... Can you feel this? <laughs> ah. All right. Go oh, do whatever you're gonna do. I guess you're getting out of school today, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh wow, you really know how to play your mother, don't you? Just say yes. You do. Mm -hmm. Alright, get out of here. Uh let's see how do you use this thing. Not something I use a lot, folks. I have one, but as you can tell, the bit of kit is pretty new. Don't often have a need for really tiny cutoff wheels. But we do today. So there's one, two, what are these? These are like little miniature sanding discs. And then there's gotta be some kind of arbor in here that we can use. Some sort. Oh, there's one. It's not made for sausage fingers. There it is. I think that'll work. We've got this thing. Ooh, the battery's still good. Let me lock it. Oh, there we go. So we'll stick that in there. Lesson on how to use a Dremel. Probably most of you guys have these things. I would think. I don't know. Anybody see where we put the cutoff wheel? Right in front of me. 
I don't know, there's more of them in here though. Oh, it's right there, right in front of me. I always find stuff in the very last spot in which I looked every time. This is so tiny, this is not made for me. My Dremel tool is usually a three inch cutoff wheel. And there's that, and you put the little tiny washer on there. Let me stick it on here. Oh boy. What if we just hold it and turn it on? What will that do? Oops. That didn't last very long, you <laughs> big dummy. All right, I'll figure this out, fellas. Well, let that be a lesson to you. Don't just hold it and turn it on. I think I should probably charge the battery once in a while. Ah, uh, story of my life. The good news is we have a hyper tough. One of these things. Oh, look at that. I've already got one hooked up. That one's too big. This one will not run out of batteries. I'll plug this one into a plugger. Right behind you, fellas. How's this one work? Whoa! Better kick it out on a level one. Nope. Well, that exploded. The good news is, when I was down in the groove and feeling around, it feels like this side of it's more open than this side. So I think if we put our clip in, with the majority of it up here, we'll be in good shape. Now, we have to clean it off. Very clean, best option. It's not even a blue towel, it's a blue glove. Totally tricked me. Good thing this isn't the burning channel. I'm thinking I should just go back to bed. Oh yeah. You feel her slip in the groove there. So that's in what feels good deep. Flip it over. I probably should leave that out so we can do this side. Is that what you just said? Because I heard you. What's up, Mrs. O? Just coming out to see you. Well, we're struggling over here. A little bit. To loosen that screw. Got the fat finger problem. I'm trying to use this little stuff. You know what I need to do? I need to ditch these. Put my 700 pair of gloves on this single job. I can hardly feel my fingers as it is. This dry shaft is pretty well whipped. I'm trying to make a miracle. Uh -huh. Yep, and I had a YouTuber guy stop in. Fella that goes by the name of Mike. Yeah. Mike and his Mercedes. So you want you to work with Mercedes? Nope, it was actually a rental car, so you just out piss pounding it. <laughs> Went to rent a junker and they were all out, so they got upgraded to a luxury SUV. Oh. Where was he from? Illinois. What's he doing here? 
a big shot up at the town, town where we like to go eat at the cellar in that town. Uh -huh. doing, doing something up there. I don't want this close too much. In case he's wanted. Need more power. Watch out, this thing can fly apart at any minute. Put on your squint. Danger is my middle name. How stupid is going to be your name when you're in the hospital? How stupid is, as stupid does. <laughs> Watch out. Oh. Okay. You shouldn't even be around this. You don't even wear deodorant with aluminium in it. I'm over here making an aluminium oh, yeah. cloud of. I'm gonna have Alzheimer's before the end of the day. Isn't that why? Isn't that what you tell me? What? Why I can't use aluminum deodorant? I gotta use that stuff you got me that rips my armpit hairs out. Why did I tell you that? Because it's gonna make me dumb. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it's like trying to wipe a brick under your underarm. I think I'd rather just stink. I think a brick would be less painful. Probably. That stuff is awful. I don't. Who the hell makes it? Where do you buy it? Right, probably the same place you get your tea from. <laughs> Jeez. Walking her house smells like she's cooking a pot of dirt. Oh, the office smells lovely right now. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we're just fermenting some cabbage in there. <laughs> no big deal. All the smells of a shop. Other, other people's shops, people walk in like, oh, this smells like brownies. Oh, this smells good. Brownies? Ours, I don't know. I heard you walk in, it's like, oh, who died? Today it does. You want uh, to take it home so that's what our no, stuff smells like? No, leave it here for the That way they don't hang out in the office very long. <laughs> All right, good luck. All right, good luck. Ooh, fancy. That's better. Okay. I feel better about myself now. Oh shucks, didn't my U joints line up with the grease fittings? it before you stick it in the vehicle, at least on this end. Uh, we have to be able to hold the cap somehow. We can just take and stick those right in the vise here. You just don't want them popping apart. Oh great, now I can't reach my grease gun. There we go, we got it, no big deal. And then give her a little shot of grease. Turned out better than I expected. I'll be honest with you. It's expecting the worst. That's what Mrs. O always says I do. We always expect the worst. But using the Dremel tool, I think, was the key to get in there and wallow out that groove the best we could. Now I was more worried about the damage that was on the end of the shaft right there, where it's you know banged in. Fortunately, it didn't break off, and because uh, if it did, this side over here is really corroded where the groove used to be. But now we're clicked in there good. So I'm happy with it. And I know there's going to be the comment on, you know, the alignment of the U-joints and the placing of the U-joints and which way they face. Rest assured, folks, this goes in an old Chevrolet G20 with a big 4.3 liter. They put out a whole whopping 110 horsepower or so, top speed of about 70. 
and it's fully loaded, it ain't gonna break the U-joints. So don't worry about that, folks, but what you can worry about is going down there to that comment box, leaving your question, comment, criticism, or concern while you're down there, subscribe, or ring that bell. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.